Tell him. <laughs> okay, we so. are here at EMC World in Las Vegas. It is the biggest show for EMC as a company. EMC also owns VMworld and RSA. If you combine those three shows, Jer as Jeremy Burton said, those numbers would be bigger than Oracle. So EMC is clearly thinking not like the old EMC. If you look at the parts of VMware, EMC, and RSA, you can throw Documentum in there, this is bigger than Oracle. So this is their core show. EMC's rolling out the big message around cloud and big data, and uh, that's, their, that's, their, that's their theme, Dave, and uh, they're kicking ass. And EMC's doing a great job. They're attracting some great talent, great management team, and they're, they're making a change in the industry. Totally transformed the company from a storage industry to pure infrastructure player, enabling massive change with virtualization and new applications. So uh, it's exciting here. Uh, Interop is right down the street, and uh, we got all the analysis covered on uh, theCUBE with wikibon.org and siliconangle.com. I'm John Furrier, I'm here with Dave Vellante, and our guest is Tony Kolish, SVP of Customer Service, Service and Support. He's been on theCUBE in Palo Alto for the extraction point. Right. Welcome to theCUBE, our you, flagship product <laughs> <laughs> at the events. Thank ESPN you. in the trailer, we're still working on every, every dollar we make goes right into the, the equipment, and we're going <laughs> to up our game every year, as we say to Jeremy Burton. So uh, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. How you been? Very good, thank you. So what's new with um, you here at the show? We, we talked a couple weeks ago, at, yep. uh, last month in Palo Alto. Um, take us through your EMC world agenda. What what are you going through right here? Because I think folks want to know what does an, an executive do? Are you talking to customers? Are yes. you talking to the sales force? Yep. Before I do that, though, I'll, I'll harken back to our discussion in Palo Alto. We were talking about VCE, and you were talking. We were talking about the parent companies that owned it. And you said, "Well, doesn't Intel have a little chunk of that?" And yeah, I Vice. Like, Vice. And I said, <laughs> "You know, if we were going to do anything in Las Vegas. That would be the time to rebrand VCE." Into Vice. Yeah, and I was quickly slapped down. It's not. Uh, VMware, EMC, and Cisco. It's virtual computing, computing environment. environment. Um, yeah, but Dave and I love to joke on the Vice. It's kind of our <laughs> inside joke. It's oh, yeah. getting some virality in the marketplace. That's good. That's really so, good. so Tony, obviously a lot going on in your world. Um, I've been following EMC for a long time. It used to be actually a, a really easy company to understand. You know, kind of a one product company, but um, it's not anymore. Right. It's a zillion product company. That's right. As, as the products get more granular, that puts a ton of pressure on your organization to support these products. I mean, I often say, I talk to customers about, you know, why do you buy? And a lot of times the answer is, because I get great service. Yep. You know, I get great support. So, I mean, and, and the products are getting more complex. We're looking at a lot of big data action now. So, how do you guys stay in the forefront of that? How do you continue to do a good job servicing customers? What kind of pressures does that put on you? How do you stay on top of it? Uh, well, the management team, and it starts with the, that and uh, just the innate culture that really, truly exists at EMC. So that basic service culture is something that you can't buy, that I'm uh, actually a custodian of, and uh, it is really deep and it's really, really authentic. And, you know, it, that's as a starting It's maniacal, point. It uh, is Pat, maniacal. Pat Gelsinger says. It it's is, it's and it's really true. true, it is maniacal. It really is. And, you know, really, I mean, I, I heartfelt really believe that if you're going to do this job, any place in our industry, EMC is the place to do it because you don't have to proselytize, everybody just gets it. So it's really focus. Now, now how about all this big data stuff? We're hearing about yep. big data, and, uh, you got Green Plum coming on, and um, eventually, I mean, you're not supporting, are you supporting Green Plum today? Yes. Or, yeah, okay, yeah. so that's already done. Yep. Um, and, and, and that's just going to get more robust, more complicated. Right. Um, what's the process for absorbing a new asset like that in? How do you make that seamless for a customer? Uh, well, we start with uh, adapting ourselves to the business model that we're trying to uh, use for that particular product set. So we don't actually have a cookie cutter that says this is the way we do an integration. We take a look at the way the company is organizing the business. Is it actually being folded in or is it being organized as a mini company within a company? And we start with that as our template and say, how do we need to then adapt to uh, that as an organization? And then we start off with some basic guiding principles about what do we want to achieve, like basic service consistency. One of the things I think we do much better now than we used to do is look for things that they do really well and don't kill them. And actually figure out how to identify those things and proliferate them around the rest of the, of the service organization. Because there's all these great ideas that 
are being generated by these companies in their startup mode, and we want to hold on to those. Now, so you're not dogmatic about it, but you try to take the best of what you've learned before. That's right. Apply that, learn some things that are new, somehow save that corporate memory. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and we, uh, frankly, we weren't as good at it a few years ago as we are now, but we're maturing as a as a acquiring company. People don't think of services as is, they don't think of services and innovation in the same sentence. Hmm. Um, why not? And um, is that fair? And can you can you talk about innovation and services? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know why they don't because it's uh, certainly a, a changing game, and uh, whether we want it to be or not, customers are demanding different ways to consume service and to not have service, you know, that's their best thing. So whether we like it or not, the marketplace is driving us to innovate. And uh, we actually pride ourselves on that at EMC. So we have a, an attitude you know, that we take when we're uh, approaching services, which is how can we amplify our company's opportunities, not just adapt to and get ready for, but how can we actually add a little fuel to the fire and either make the opportunity bigger or differentiate the company or take market share faster or something like that. So it starts with that attitude and that has yielded you know, kind of a, a lot of innovation over the last few years. You use a lot of technology in your support organization, That's right? That's right. I mean, um, talk a little bit about the technology that you use and, uh, and, and how that's evolving. I mean, customers, you know, they used to just call up, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. They don't do that anymore. I mean, some do, yeah. but a lot of different channels. That's How do you right. manage all those channels? What are they? You know, talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, that's one of our main themes is, is that we want to be able to engage customers in any channel that they choose under any scenario or circumstance that they find appropriate and in any language that they choose. And to your point, it used to be pick up the phone, and now we want to be able to say if you want to go to the website and you want to find things yourself, if you want to ask other customers how to solve problems, if you want to engage in chat, and all those kinds of things uh, we want to enable in addition to picking up the phone. Uh, that's been driving a lot of services technology innovation over the last few years, and, uh, and just the customer adoption has just been absolutely as outstanding of the, the new features we put out there. Now I know in a lot of situations, so chat is is growing, I presume, right? Yep. I mean, a lot of people like to use chat, and a lot of a lot of companies that I've researched, their their approach, their protocol is that they force their agents to handle simultaneous chats. Um, we all know this, right? We we call, we call up a company, we go to the web, or we're in a chat session, and the response rate is very slow. I was in a chat the other day, I won't name the company. I'm like, hello, are you there? <laughs> hello, are you multitasking? And yeah, because they want them to manage three or four open chats simultaneously. Yep. Do you allow that on, 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 uh, at EMC when they're chatting, or is it a one-to-one -one interaction? One-to-one. -one. So it's all one-to-one? -one. It's all one-to-one, -one, and we uh, aim for a sub two minute response. Sub two minute response? And, is uh, that the key metric, is how fast you can That's right. You can respond and yeah, solve a problem? Well the benchmarks show that after two minutes the abandon rate goes off the cliff. So that's about the time limit patient. Okay, so it's two minutes to engage. Two to two minutes to engage. Okay. And then we found through the nature of the interaction with chat we're solving problems two thirds faster than any other channel. Really fast ch ch two thirds faster. Two thirds faster. And part of it is, is that Why we're using because we're using this technology with with chat that engages the right engineer for the right kind of problem. So it avoids some of the things that we get with phone, where somebody tries to interpret what the customer problem is, puts it in a queue for somebody to pick up, and it might be right or might be wrong. This gets uh, at a much higher hit rate. Somebody qualified to handle the problem engaged in less than two minutes. So it's an IVR for chat-like technology. Yeah, exactly. Is that the way to think about <laughs> it? It is. It's exactly and it's what it is. effective. You're, it you're is very effective. It. Oh, Tony, um, question for you, and sorry about the background noise, I'm going to shut the pavilion down, uh, Dave. <laughs> Can you have them work on that? Please. The, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of good action can't going hear on us, there. This is a pavilion, and I have to lean a little bit. Um, Jeremy Burton, Pat Gelsinger, all the execs were on, you're, all your peers, cloud meets big data, that's the messaging. They all, have to, they all have to use big data in their job. You are living yeah. big data. We talked uh, in that's Palo Alto, right. um, it's core to your, to your mission to use data, because you have to deal with customers and service them in whatever channel and vehicle that they need to be serviced at the, at the level you are, and you guys are winning awards big time doing that. So, you're kind of doing great, and the world's changing. So, what's your strategy for maintaining that level of performance of customer service, and then how are you going to use big data <laughs> to make it better? 
Uh, it's really very exciting times. I mean, to your point, we, we've been using management by metrics as a mantra for the last several years. And, uh, you know, we have one of the very first data scientists from my team, actually. This guy is uh, Frank Coleman, who's just been really instrumental in, in bringing this stuff together so that we have one source of the truth, fact-based assessments of ourselves, fact-based conversations with salespeople and customers. And now these new tools that we have are opening up all kinds of new possibilities. And to your point, you know, we s respond to millions of service requests every year. And when you think about how much intelligence that provides us that we can use in all kinds of ways, if we actually had the right kind of tools to actually analyze it. Frankly, we didn't have those tools until very recently. And now we can start looking at things which are across that vast amount of service request data for things that can prevent problems from happening in the first place with customers and can make our processes better and can feed information to them quicker and so on. It's a very, very exciting process. And then um, Jeremy Burton was talking about the marketing side of it to reach their customers. You guys are going to have to do the same, but you have all the customer data because you service the customers. <laughs> Is there going to be an intersection? Are you guys talking, you and Jeremy, and the marketing teams and the customer support teams? Yes, I mean, I, I expect that we will be one of the, similar to the way our IT organization is with a lot of our virtualization technology, I expect that we will be one of the first adopters yeah. of, uh, you know, making the story true. EMC's known for dog fooding or drinking <laughs> their own wine, it's a little more, if someone says better visual than dog fooding, which is, yeah, you that, know, that is California better. term, but uh, uh, drinking your own wine, that's another California term, but um, what can you share with the folks out there that you guys are doing internally that's a best practice um, that you're rolling out to, to your customers. With bit, with big data or? In or in general, just you know, innovations. Well, um, I, I do, I think the services technology stuff is, is really, really uh, cutting edge. It's this critical mass of user experience, functionality, and um, we were talking a moment before, this is this concept of being able to let customers engage us in any channel that they choose in any circumstance that they think is appropriate and any any language that they choose is a, a real innovation for us. And um, so that has a services technology component that's uh, <laughs> really, really key. And so we're starting to, as we were talking about chat before, and the next thing that we think is a real treasure trove of value to provide to customers is going to be the community forms. And uh, that's a, some untapped potential, and again, in all languages. So one of the cool things that we're going to do with forms, for example, is we're about to launch them in nine different languages. But we're going to pre-populate them with content from the other languages and, con and move the content back and forth so that we get this amplification effect from the Well, forms. Tony, you have a big data example of sort of dog fooding. I know we wrote about this on Wikibon. You guys at the TSIA conference just recently won an award. I think it was your second year in a row. That's right. You won the award for using analytics in your business. That's right. So yep. you're kind of using a form of big data. I don't That's know how right. big it is, actually. Uh, uh, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. What's that, what's that all about? It's huge. I mean, as we were saying, it's that we do thou uh, millions of service requests a year. And so the, the data that we mine to be able to assess our performance is from that set of data. Uh, one of the cool things that we do, which I think has also got some more life coming with it with the new tools, is we have this thing called an early warning system that uh, really is a, a propensity for things to blow up at a customer, either from technical risks or from political and emotional risks. So things where we can see there's a set of circumstances going on with a customer that may be presenting some kind of outage risk or some kind of application failure risk, as well as things which are things like, they've just had a lot of service requests, so maybe they're getting a little impatient with having to engage us all the time. So we've been using that as a further of our history of trying to be proactive with the support we provide, there's more, now that we have these new tools with big data, that we can start doing that on a whole nother level about proactive service and getting really early indicators of technical and other risks that are going on with the customers. So this is an anticipatory capability That's that right. allows you to predict it, yeah. you know, a potential event and, and avoid certain failures and, and other customer disasters. That's right. Um, and we want to start showing that to customers. So, so far we've been using that and we see some real potential and actually exposing that to customers to let them know that says, look, we saw these conditions occurring with you, and here's what we did to take it off the table. So that they, you know, it's good if they know that we're not waiting for that. You're giving them some love there. Well, it's, we've come a long way from phone home, haven't That's we? Right. I mean, that really was, I mean, EMC was one of the innovators. Actually, I think the innovator 
a right. phone home, if I recall. Certainly in the storage business, and I would, I think actually in the IT business. In the early days, John, EMC, basically, and its symmetrics had this phone home capability when there was a problem, it would phone into the war room. And you know, if you've ever been, you know, on a tour of EMC back in those days, you see this bot modem, you know. Yeah, that's exactly. That, that's exactly right. <laughs> you know, they were all attached to mainframes, and you got, you know, start when, ringing. Glory days, baby. That was you know, know, back when ET was had some. <laughs> but, that, but now the customers are, are now connected in another way. They're just diversely connected. They got you know iPhones and mobile devices. They're More in connection forums, points, right? That's and right. so it's omnidirectional uh, access to your customer base. So, I mean, that's a data problem in and of itself. Um, but, but, but I want to hear, Tony, your view on some of the challenges that you're seeing in the customer environment because EMC is changing its brand, mm -hmm. its, its customer base is growing more, it's more, a lot more solution oriented, yep. multi-vendor we chatted about. What are the, some of the challenges, what are the hard things that you guys have, have accomplished and what are the challenges going forward? Uh, well, it's a good point, is infusing new acquisition service organizations with the service culture is a big challenge. And uh, what, something that we every single time presents uh, some new challenges is that the EMC expectations among this customer base are really high. So just as a basic old management challenge, that remains every single time we do an acquisition. Sure. And to the point, you do, we're getting better at you it. You think that's going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Uh, Pat Gelsinger, here. That's good. We try to get Pat to uh, to tell us. Um, but there's a long list. <laughs> uh, no, but you guys have been pretty successful in acquisitions. I mean, in general, you know, the feedback we hear from the entrepreneurs is that operationally they've been very successful. I mean, obviously the speed bumps, but no real you know, colossal failures. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's both the service culture infusion, uh, and for us, it's actually exhilarating because these new opportunities are exercising our rapid growth skills again, you know, it's, it's really fun to be uh, in this situation, have all these rocket ships to try to manage. And the big theme here at EMC World that Dave and I have been highlighting and is the editorial around, um, you know, the sandbox of innovation with applications and cloud failing with PlayStation. We see that out there and Amazon failed recently and, mm. and, and, and that's kind of like the big kind of market uh, forces. Here at the show, the big sizzle is the Hadoop or big data, but the stake, the meat on the bone is a lot of the solutions. So we've, mm -hmm. we've talked to CSC, CSC and you know, people are doing business, there's money being made now, yep. it's maturing a bit, and yep. you know, bottom of the first inning, top of the second inning, however you want to look at it, but this is the real deal. This is solutions deployment, That's right. reference architectures, so you're trying, to, you're trying to get some data in on this, so where, how does that affect your business? It's profoundly affecting the business. So we're going through a very evolutionary but fundamental organizational change. We introduced this thing called practices into our service organization in addition to field service and remote technical service. And the idea of a practice is to align communities of interest in the service organization around these solutions. And uh, it's probably going to be the most impactful change we make in customer service over the coming years, but it's incremental. Yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, so we're here with Tony Kolish, who is uh, a, a, a frequent guest on theCUBE now. You're an alum, exactly. so that's good. Thanks for coming back. And My uh, we're talking about innovation in services, which you don't usually con connect services and innovation. Well, Dave, it's um, a balance. I mean, it's a, the, the, the challenge is that, that Tony's been, and we talked about this in the Cube in Palo Alto, it's, um, in the culture at EMC, we heard from Jeremy and the executive, top executives that they like to experiment and be on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And so when you're at the top of your game and winning awards and you're a mature company like EMC at scale, you got to use the new tools and you got to experiment, right? So, mm -hmm. but you don't want to cut your throat. You're talking about your customers, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the pressure is on. This is not Absolutely. like, you know, <laughs> you can't just like try something and say, oh, it failed, you know. Well, one of the things we Customer haven't talked about. satisfaction is goes down through the, will, will plummet. So you got the, probably a very tough job in that. You got to, Try the new tools. And keep the wheels on the bus. You got to keep it real and keep it high energy yep. and high uh, value. Refueling um, the plane while you're in midair. So, but, but one of the things we haven't <laughs> talked about is the um, the whole channels. The, we had Doug Wood on earlier. Yep. And he has entry systems in his title. And I, I said, Doug, entry systems used to mean a seventy-five thousand dollar Clarion. It doesn't anymore. We have seen VNXE. We, now. My kids, you know, could use my family. We could go out and yep. get a VNXE. You know, I'd like to drop the price a little bit more, but. Talk about that off off camera, but um, you've had to figure out how to take that model and support a whole new channel. Mm -hmm. um, 
Talk about that a little bit. How's, how's that going? I mean, it's going very well. I mean, for us, it's the first uh, manifestation of product and services coming together. So the service access is right through the same UI that you use to configure the product. So the services technology roadmap and the product roadmap are coming together for the first time in uh, the VNX product line. And uh, I mean, you were asking about innovation before. This is one of the places where I think we've got a real opportunity here. What we, since this is primarily a partner-driven support experience, what we want to try to do here, which we think will be differentiate us from practically everybody else in the industry, if not everybody else in the industry, is again is to be able to stand up partner-branded e-services sites, so that the partners don't have the cost of standing up their own e-services infrastructure, nor the cost of maintaining it and they deliver to their customers and to themselves the benefits of having an e-services organization without a threat to their relationship. Yeah, I want my name as a partner on that brand. I don't want EMC coming in and reaching around and grabbing my customers. Exactly. And you're saying you're sensitized to that issue and, yes. and have a business model to support that. And the technology infrastructure. So this is where this notion of uh, these convergence of things that we've been doing in the technology space and the things we've been doing in other areas are starting to come together in good pieces. So for example, in addition to the uh, the technology infrastructure, our scale, our multilingual scale is also, there's not a whole lot of companies that have the kind of scale we do. So one of the things that we could do, for example, is go grab market share amongst the partner community in China. Go build partner branded e-services that are really, really content and functionality rich for the China marketplace and get there, take market share before anybody else, particularly our smaller competitors, get there. Talk about the challenges around EMC's broad partnering strategy. I mean, VCE, we talked a lot earlier yesterday about VCE, Vice, as we call it, <laughs> you know, uh, EMC Vice. Um, <laughs> it's a very successful one, and I saw Frank Houck at the uh, Unisys party, and um, he's excited to, to be taking over the helm, but 900 people. I mean, it's an army of people on that joint venture um, deploying these solutions and you have to support that? I mean, are you involved in that? And to what level? And, and can you share an update, details on VCE? Sure, and uh, we recognized in the service organization almost two years ago when we first heard Palmer Ritz and Joe Tucci talking about the value proposition of the products that, uh, that if this caught on, it's caught on as an idea that the second thing out of a customer's mouth was going to be, well, that's great, but how do you support it? So uh, I reached out to my colleagues at Cisco and VMware about two years ago and said, we got to do something unique here to provide a one company support experience to the customers that choose to go to, uh, with VC yeah. for their private cloud experience. Two years later, that's working very, very well. The value proposition has turned out to be true. And uh, with a joint venture entity, so now they, we have an opportunity for, to do things that probably would have been harder uh, as parent organizations because now we can invest in VCE to build up support capabilities that, we, that would be harder for us to do well, on And our when own. they talk but about a single throat to choke, it's yours, isn't it? It is, indeed. <laughs> but it's also that same channel issue, you got the channel conflict and that, that, that uh, was addressed. You guys are now out of the competition with your partners. At the same time, you can now support it. Um, you know, that, that is usually what kills joint ventures. Most joint ventures don't work. If you look at the, Dave, the history of joint ventures, I mean, and usually it's just, you know, the industry's it's just, you know, Barney there, deals, yeah. as they say, you know, they love each other, but nothing happens because the execution is too difficult. So, mm -hmm. you know, hats off to you there. And I think, I think the VCE success is the first time I've really seen a true joint venture in tech in such diverse players <laughs> work. John, I have to admit, when it I does. first heard about Acadia, I said, come on, really? I mean, very skeptical. And uh, I think it's quite impressive what you've okay. done in the last year or so. Tony, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. We're looking forward to working with you. We are going to work with some of your folks. We know uh, we're going to do some uh, services focus. We're going to do some content development. Uh, Dave and I are really excited about you know, bringing in a CIO perspective around uh, services and consulting, and uh, uh, it's going to be something we're going to start covering heavily, so we're looking forward to it. Thanks for your support. Uh, Tony Kolish, SVP of Customer Support at EMC. Great executive, also in California as well, so just another, another California <laughs> exactly. uh, migration of EMC. Um, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com, with Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. We're going to wrap right now and go to, a, go to a package, take a break, and we're going to come back with some from new, new content from uh, Dave and John. <laughs>